This is my friend, Al Frederick, and uh, we have been talking about relationship a lot. And uh, ever since City Surf started, I've been on this uh, like this uh, this destination where I want to get with people and have these kind of conversations. So we're going to just talk a little bit about today about what yeah. you're passionate about. But before we do that, uh, why don't you just everybody has a starting place. Yeah. And uh, the other, one of the other things I really like about you, Al, is that you, half the year, will, when I see you in public, you'll be wearing shorts. <laughs> and most of the time in flip-flops, and I love that. And that probably has something to do with your roots. And right. So where did you come from, and yeah. how did you end up here? Well, you know, when you give your life to Jesus, and that's the true story, giving your life to Jesus, and you realize you, your sins have been bought with a price, you're a new creation, and you realize where you, Lord, you've delivered me from the drugs and the alcohol and all yeah. this stuff. And I remember praying. I said, Lord, wherever you want me to go, whenever you want me to go, and uh, I'll go there. Yeah. And then he said, go to the Northwest. And I know, I know that. And we talk about answering the caller. How did you hear from that? My wife is from Vancouver, Washington. Uh -huh. And so we had been up here on vacation, tried to move up in 1987, two years before we were saved. Mm -hmm. Didn't work out, hated it, it rains. It's got that liquid sunshine, you know? So we, I, I hightailed it back. She came, followed me. Two years later, we got saved. Prayed that prayer, Lord, where do you want me to go? And he said, go back to the Northwest. And I'm like, I don't know. From where? San Diego. Yeah. Flip flops and shorts Flip flops and shorts. <laughs> well, the, the congregation here knows that uh, Sunday mornings, not so much Sundays, but Wednesday nights, every time I get a chance, I'm in shorts. It's yeah. just the way it is, you yeah. know? You can take a boy out of the beach, but you can't get that beach out of the boy, I guess. Yeah, good you know? things. <laughs> it's a good thing. And yeah. the other thing is that we're both church planters. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, it's kind of like a different mentality when you plant churches. I mean, yeah. you have to be willing to start with nothing and build and not worry too much about the process, but just right. be faithful, right? That's exactly right. 20 years ago, November 4th, wow. we started the church and... Uh, it's been that, you know, we came out of Calvary, Vancouver. It was just a neat way of transitioning. Yeah. But uh, the land of churches, really in the Northwest, uh, one of the least churched areas in the nation, but yet not building wise, because right. there are a lot of building churches here. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's so important. I, I think people should understand what they're calling is through life, whatever right. they are. Paul always said, and he always put this first, that he said, Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle. So it's always that bond right. servant mentality that we have. Lord, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, called to be a pastor or called to be a, an accountant. So back in San Diego, pr just prior to getting saved, my wife and I had been separated for a thousand miles for six months. And I was going wow. through spiraling out of town or out of life kind of and um i my brother got saved a year before i did and he would come and share with me about the gospel about jesus and he goes how oh, it's not how we were brought up it's about a relationship with jesus christ and I, whatever you know i'm blowing him off blowing him off and finally he shared one day with me and i was tinkering with my land cruiser in the garage and i walked through the garage you know you got three steps to get through a laundry room in yeah. the the rest of the house and I had a roommate, and, and uh, the three steps that I took to get through the laundry room, I had this vision. And it, remind you, I'm not saved. Uh, I'm not, uh, I wasn't high at the time. At least I don't think I was. <laughs> no, I could have been. But I walked through the laundry room, and uh, I had this vision that I was teaching to a mass of people. Yeah. And, and I, ha I heard this, you, I've called you to serve me and to pastor my people. And so I take the fourth step and go into the front room. My roommate's there, and, and I, he goes, what's wrong? And I go, man, I just got this vision. And, of course, he asked, what are you on now? Yeah. And I said, no. I said, for real, I said, I, I just heard this voice that I'm called to be a pastor. Didn't know what it was. I was, I was born, under the, born and raised under the Catholic priest uh, religion. So after that, that was 1989, and then I got saved December 9th, 1989, and then, uh, I, you know, the Lord reminded me of that. I was sitting in 
uh, church and Pastor Mike McIntosh was teaching out of James oh, yeah. where he talks about how what city do you know you're going to buy and sell in and the Lord was reminding me of this and we're, we're actually coming up to that on a Sunday morning you know uh, that passage in James but it's like um, he was reminding me of the calling R remember I've called you and then it's like then that prayer that I prayed as a young Christian right when I got saved whatever you want me to do yeah. look I, I've screwed my life up what, whatever you want me to do I'll do that yeah. And that's when he said, go to the Northwest. Interesting thing on that is, well, I had a good job back there. I was a professional junkie. And my wife and I were living with my brother at the time who had gotten saved. And he said, or I, I asked the Lord, I said, you know, he said, go to the Northwest. I said, well, I'll go, but I don't have any money. That was December 9th that got saved. By the end of December, we had a $14,000 check in our pocket. Wow. And it was like the Lord confirming that. So that's a young Christian. You know, just, you know, full on, you know, child, childlike obedience. And we came up to the Northwest March 12th, 1990. And then we just started serving and serving the Lord. would constantly remind me, I called you, I called you, I called you. And never ran after that. Yeah. But I knew that he had that for me. It wasn't for mine to lose. He was preparing me for that, you right. know. So, I mean, you can't just get saved and go into pastorate. So I think it was five years uh, of being saved. I was an elder and assistant pastor on a church board. Uh, scary stuff. Yeah. And then 10 years, um, we were sent out, started a Bible study up in the Longview area for about three years, just teaching the Bible at home. And then one morning, uh, the Lord said, go to Sunday mornings. And he said, I was just woken up out of bed, was going to get some coffee. And I heard the same, the same familiar voice, go to Sunday mornings. And I, and I kind of laughed. Yeah, and the Lord reminded me of when Sarah laughed when she was uh -oh. going to have a baby, and I and I and I said, "Well, Lord, that's good, you know, <laughs> that that that's fine. Okay, you're we're having this great. I love having that conversation with the Lord." So I got my coffee and I sat down, put my coffee down, get in my chair, and I spent some time with the Lord, and uh, I said, "Okay, Lord, well, good luck. If you're going to confirm that, I want to hear it in your in your word." And we were living in Battleground at the time, and then I got in the word. I said, and I remember this. Good luck, Lord. I'm in Deuteronomy. <laughs> so if you're going to speak to me, you're going to have to speak through the book of Deuteronomy and, and confirm your word to me. And I kid you not, it was like, uh, how are you going to get confirmation from the Lord through that? And sure enough, the Lord had shared this verse with me. Uh, I was in Deuteronomy chapter 2, and uh, he said this. I'll get on the right version so I get it the way I read it. It says this. And then we've, we've turned and journeyed into the wilderness by the way of Mount, uh, by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke to me, and, uh, and we skirted Mount Seir for many days. And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have skirted this mountain long enough, turn northward. <laughs> and I'm like, All right, Lord. So Eight apparently later. the Lord still speaks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the confirmation. So you're yeah. just not going off a whim, you're getting confirmation. He speaks to us through his word, uh, Hebrews 1. So I was like, wow, that was really cool. And so eight months later, you know, again, uh, there's this thing that I've, I've grown up with, the Lord has given me. It's God's word and God's timing yeah. produces fruit. Right. But if God gives you a word and you try and outrun it or put it together, manufacture it, forget about it. Or if I want to do it in the name of the Lord and have no word from the yeah. Lord, forget about it. Hey, that's a good question, too, because I think it doesn't matter who we are, yeah. male or female, that God is calling us, right? He's got something he wants us to do. And it's not like usher, I'm called to be an usher. That could be, but not necessarily so. He's calling us to be the quintessential, fruitful, obedient husband, yeah, wife, worker at, at our careers, witness. So it's not just in the four walls of the church no. that we think of a calling. Um, I, I was always called by God before he fulfilled the pastor. I was a uh, lift truck driver. I was a, um, you know, supervisor. But that's what I was doing, you know. So I would I would sit down with people and I'd tell them, look, it, here's the number one thing you, we need to do, in my opinion, is you got you got to hang out with the Lord and you got to get to know him so you hear his voice right. so that you can respond. I think one of the big, the bigger things that happens today in the, is in the church is, I don't know if we're, uh, we're maybe afraid to respond to the Lord, or we're not sure if we hear His voice. You know, it's kind of like the gifts, you know, being used. Yeah. If 
we don't use them, you lose them kind of thing. And we just want to make sure, okay, I want to make sure that I'm hearing and responding. How do you get it from here to here is by doing, yeah. you know, you hear what God wants us to do and we become a doer by walking it out in, in faith and life. So I love sitting with young Christians and um, sitting down with them and saying, you know, you know what God wants you to do? Yeah. Well, the, the, every Christian has this calling to be sanctified. Right. So that's the will of God. What is the will of God for you? That you be sanctified. So if we just concentrate on one thing, and I, I, I tell people, God will give you your calling. If you haven't heard from him, don't worry about it. Yeah. He's going to speak in his time. So we're, we have one thing that's to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Right. And then all these things shall be added unto you. But if we misplace that one thing, then we get things out of order. Right. And it's like I start chasing things instead of the only one that matters. Well, don't you think some of it too, Al, is that we try to figure out what we've called, we've been called to do. Mm -hmm. And actually he's called us to be someone, yeah. to be something yeah. more than just do things. Because we can get so distracted yeah. by the things that we do, we never really be the person we've been called to be. And you know how, because you've seen it happen so many times, when mm -hmm. somebody discovers who they're supposed to be, the kind of person they're supposed to be. Yeah. It's revolutionary. It changes yeah. them. When, when we're called by God, even in, this, in the sense of attending a church, yeah. a certain church, God has me here. God, bloom where you're planted kind of thing. And then if God has you there, you, you shouldn't be released from it, right? Because yeah. that calling is huge. I think location, vocation, um, I think the calling of God is huge. And I think as people, how can I, um, you know, James says, again, I'm just constantly running through my mind for Sunday morning. But he say, it says, faith without works is dead. Right. So the church needs to understand how it's operating and not because it's an open slot. You know, like we have this saying here about, um, I don't want to see, we don't want to see warm bodies in open holes like children's ministry right. or ushering. We want to see people that are called. We have people pray about it. And uh, we want you to pray about it and know that God is putting you there. If not, well, we'll wait on the next person. And I, don't you, I, I just think that this whole region would change if people were walking in their calling because they'd be confident, they'd be in the word, they'd be praying because they have having conversations with God all the mm -hmm. time. Because when you're called, you're called to someone. Mm -hmm. You're not just called to ministry. You're not mm -hmm. called to a job description. You're called yeah. to a person first. Right. And that, yeah. just think about how relationships with people would, uh, relationships with God would be revitalized if people knew they were called. Yeah. And I just think that's something we can stir up. Like, I don't know, when you look at somebody and you see the gold that's in them mm -hmm. and you just pull that gold out, you know, like, do you see who you are? Yeah. Do you see what you're made of? Do you see what God's given you? Man, just walk in that, believe that. Yeah. Uh, the rapture. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say Right? That. I knew you were going to say uh, Really, um, I'll tell you what, Jeff. Um, I'm starting to see it. Yeah. Um, I'm not doing anything different than I did when I started 20 years ago. Yeah. And uh, so the, the atmosphere of Sunday morning and Wednesday nights, you're seeing these people with a heart to... Um, worship God yeah. and to hear from his word and they're coming in they're getting saved we're seeing salvation we're seeing people uh, we, we have baptism Sunday um, we're seeing people at our discipleship class so I guess I'm seeing something here anywhere here at Calvary I'm seeing um, people when they when they come they they're coming with just just humility openness give me revival and you got to speak to me speak yeah. to me because that's where it starts right i'm really seeing a sense of this uh here a little bit that it's 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 really a unique and i it's not because i'm doing it i, I got to say that right not because it has nothing to do with me but i'm seeing this uniqueness i've never seen before yeah uh in a church and not not not, not saying i'm not trying to be judgmental I'm not because I don't I don't even know what it is I'm seeing. Right. Except the fruit of it is incredible. It's like I, I mean, I'm just sitting back and it blows me away and I'm thinking, God, I had nothing to do with this. And you know what he says, just keep that in mind. Yeah. 
because it's just the sweetness, you know, of fellowship and prayer. And, you, you know, when, when you leave here, you know, we dismiss the crowd. They don't leave and they're praying for one another. Right. And you see this fellowship. And it's almost at a point to where we have to divide our two services a little more. But um, they're, that's what they're seeing. You know, I don't know. So what would I like to see then? I want to see it continue. Yeah. That's what yeah. I want to see. Um, I, I don't know how much longer I have. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. Yeah. But I want to see the next generation get raised up. Yeah. yeah. I just want to tell you, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Amen. For, thank you. For, and I think the fact that we're sitting down talking is a testimony to how things are changing too. Yeah. I think we're realizing we need each other more than we, maybe we thought we did. Maybe it, yeah. that just comes with age too. But I, it's, yeah. a, it's a joy to serve with you, Al. Yeah. Thank Amen. you for doing this. Yeah, well, thank you for even having me on this. And I, I look forward to what the Lord has planned. Yeah, I think it's going to be incredible. We really hope today's episode was helpful. You'll find more resources and content to connect with other community leaders by going to our website, cityservecowlets.org. So it's been a joy to walk with you, and we'll see you soon.